Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about engines, uh, specifically dry sump engines. Uh, I'm going to explain what that means. Let's look at an engine from the side. Uh, it looks something like that. Okay, this is the engine block and here you would have, let's say, your cylinders. There's the, there's the pistons in the cylinders. Okay. Con rods. Okay, let's not do that here like that. So, okay. And here at the bottom, you would have the crankshaft connecting all those con rods. I'm just going to draw a simplified version now. Now, what you have in a, in a typical engine found in production cars, here at the bottom, you have the oil container. It looks something like that. And in here, you would have all that oil used by the engine for lubrication and cooling. And what happens, that oil, uh, let me just pick another color. Let me take red. So that oil gets pumped up into the engine, lubricates all uh, things in the engine, just let me put it here, and then falls back down into the sump where it collects, and, and then it starts to cycle again. Obviously, you would have here some filters and stuff like that to remove the grime or dirt from the oil, especially the, the stuff that it collects on its journey through the engine. Now, that's what, that's what is called the wet sump engine or system okay because that sump down here is wet wet with oil now a dry sump system would look something like that I'm just gonna revert back to blue take the same engine as before there's my cylinders And now the difference is I don't have that sump at the bottom. My oil container is in a separate place. There's my oil and it's connected to the engine via pipes or hoses or whatever. Okay. So as you see, that engine doesn't have that lower bit here. And in this case, oil let me just get red again. In this case, oil would go out of that oil tank into the engine, do the same procedure as before, and then at the bottom here, it would get pumped out of the engine and back into the oil tank. The advantage is that this engine is much more compact than this one. This engine can be mounted much lower in the car than this one. Lowering an engine in a car is very important. An engine weighs a lot. It's, it's a big percentage of the car's weight. So if you have that weight lower in the car, that car will handle better because you lower the center of gravity. So if you, if you have a car, let me just draw it here. If you have a car like that, there are the wheels. That's, that's now a low car. And if you have here another car, let me, let me take a blue. Oops. And I have here, let's do the same tires. But now I have here a high car. That low car is going to go much better in turns than this one. Why? Because in turns, a car tends to want to, uh, due to the centrifugal forces, tends to roll over, you know, to roll like that. And a lower car is harder to roll than a higher car. You know, this rolls much easier. Thus, the handling of a higher car is worse in turns than the handling of a lower car. The same applies in acceleration. When a high car accelerates, it'll want, I mean, this is now the front of the car, if, if this car accelerates, it'll want to flip back like that. 
but you want to yaw backwards or squat backwards same thing with braking a high car wants to you know drive dive uh, and, and sort of roll over itself with a lower car you don't have this problem a low car even in acceleration or braking tends to 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 to, to not to be as nervous as a high car so it tends to roll less than a high car and tends to dive less under braking than a high car thus in cars the the, the the position of the center of gravity is very important especially with something like an engine an engine represents a high percentage of of mass in a car so lowering the engine makes your car overall a better handling vehicle and that's one advantage of a dry sump system. That's why you find it in racing cars. No racing car uh, would use a wet sump system if, if it can be avoided. Most of them use dry sump systems. And that, that, that's one big reason is that you can lower that engine in the, in the, in the car's chassis. You see, if I had a, a, um, a dry sump engine, let, let me draw that here. If I had this engine above here, see, I could place it like that. Now, whereas if I had that engine on here, you know, I could place it like that. See how much lower I can get it because of the, of the lack of that sump, okay? Um, another thing about, about dry sump systems is that your oil tank is separate from the engine. So you can place that oil tank where you want. Here, you can't, it's, it's, you know, it's tied to the engine. But here, you can, Place that that uh, you know um, that that uh, oil tank anywhere in the car. So if you need, let's say, some extra mass at the back of the car to improve acceleration, you place your oil tank there. And in fact, most racing cars have the oil tank between the engine and the gearbox. So uh, just let me go down here a bit. So in most racing cars, you would have here you'd have the driver. Let me just throw the helmet. Then you'd have the oil tank. Then you'd have the engine, dry sump, obviously. Then you'd have here the oil tank. And then you'd have here the gearbox. And that oil tank supplies both gearbox and engines. In some cases, in other cases not, okay? And having that oil tank separate from the engine gives you a better uh, weight distribution because now you can say, okay, this oil tank here serves my weight distribution with a car's weight distribution way better than if it's up, if it's down here, you see? So that's, and ev I can even place the oil tank way back here if I wanted to, no problem, you know? But just all I need is a longer hose and maybe some more powerful pumps, okay? So, so that's another big advantage of dry sump systems. The, uh, sorry, advantage of dry sump systems. The disadvantage of dry sump systems, they're obviously much more complicated than, uh, than a wet, wet sump system. So um, <clears throat> if you go back here, here in this system, all I need is one pump, pump the stuff up and then it'll fall down again. Here, I, I need a couple of pumps, one pump to pump it from the oil tank to the, to the engine. And then I need some so-called scavenge pumps, which will pump all the oil out of the engine and back in the oil tank at least one uh, pressure pump and one scavenge pump but I could have more of each so that's a disadvantage and it's it's a much higher complexity but the performance advantages far outweigh those disadvantages another thing with the another advantage with dry sump systems is that here um, when, a, when a, especially high performance uh, cars, when they go into turns or when they accelerate very hard or brake very hard, there are a lot of G-forces acting on this sum. So that oil will be sloshing over here and could froth, you know, due to the sloshing. It could also be disturbed by the crankshaft going up and down. It could also disturb this, this, this uh, liquid tank at the bottom here. You don't have that problem with a dry sump. Okay, so that's another advantage of, of, dry, of dry sums. That's why in high performance uh, uh, engines, not only in racing cars, but if I'm not mistaken, also ships, they have dry sums. The separation of the oil tank, the lower center of gravity, and a better, uh, and uh, let's say that the fact that the oil gets less disturbed by G-forces or the engine's own, own crankshaft are factors which speak for dry sump uh, systems. Okay. I hope that was uh, clear. If not, just drop a comment in the in the feedback uh, in the 